A reading from the book of Lamentations. The Lord has pitilessly destroyed all the homes of Jacob. In his displeasure, he has shattered the strongholds of the daughter of Judah. He has thrown to the ground, he has left the accursed, the kingdom and its rulers. Mutely, they sit on the ground, the elders of the daughters of Zion. They have put dust on their heads and wrapped themselves in sackcloth. The virgins of Jerusalem hang their heads down to the ground. My eyes wasted away with weeping, my entrails shuddered, my liver spilled on the ground at the ruin of the daughters of my people, as children, mere infants, fainted in the squares of the citadel. They kept saying to their mothers, where is the bread? as they fainted like wounded men in the squares of the city, as they poured out their souls on their mother's breasts. How can I describe you? To what compare you, daughter of Jerusalem? Who can rescue and comfort you, virgin daughter of Zion? For huge as the sea is your affliction, who can possibly cure you? The visions your prophets had on your behalf were delusive, tinsel things. They never pointed out your sin to ward off the exile. The visions they proffered were false, fallacious, misleading. Cry aloud then to the Lord, groan, daughter of Zion. Let your tears flow like a torrent day and night. Give yourself no relief. Grant your eyes no rest. Up, cry out in the night time, in the early hours of darkness, pour your heart out like water before the Lord. Stretch out your hands to him for the lives of your children, which faint with hunger at the entrance to every street. The word of the Lord. Do not forget your poor servants forever. Why, O God, have you cast us off forever? Why blaze with anger against the sheep of your pasture? Remember your people whom you chose long ago, the tribe you redeemed to be your own possession, the mountain of Zion where you made your dwelling. Do not forget your poor servants forever. Turn your steps to these places that are utterly ruined. The enemy has laid waste the whole of the sanctuary, Your foes have made uproar in your house of prayer. They have set up their emblems, their foreign emblems, high above the entrance to the sanctuary. Do not forget your poor servants forever. Their axes have battered the wood of its doors. They have struck together with hatchet and pickaxe. O God, they have set your sanctuary on fire. They have raised and profaned the place where you dwell. Do not forget your poor servants forever. Remember your covenant. Every cave in the land is a place where violence makes it home. Do not let the oppressed return disappointed. Let the poor and the needy bless your name. Do not forget your poor servants forever. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Our Saviour, Christ Jesus, abolished death, and he has proclaimed life through the good news. Alleluia, Alleluia. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. When Jesus went into Capernaum, a centurion came up and pleaded with him. Sir, he said, my servant is lying at home paralyzed and in great pain. 
I will come myself and cure him, said Jesus. The centurion replied, Sir, I'm not worthy to have you under my roof. Just give the word and my servant will be cured. For I am under authority myself and I have soldiers under me. And I say to one man, go, and he goes. To another, come here, and he comes. To my servant, do this, and he does it. When Jesus heard this, he was astonished and said to those following him, I tell you solemnly, nowhere in Israel have I found faith like this. And I tell you that many will come from east and west to take their places with Abraham and Isaac and Jacob at the feast in the kingdom of heaven. But the subjects of the kingdom will be turned out into the dark where there will be weeping and grinding of teeth. And to the centurion, Jesus said, go back then. You have believed, so let this be done for you. And the servant was cured at that moment. And going into Peter's house, Jesus found Peter's mother-in-law in bed with fever. He touched her hand, and the fever left her, and she got up and began to wait on him. That evening, they brought him many who were possessed by devils. He cast out the spirits with the word and cured all who were sick. This was to fulfill the prophecy of Isaiah. He took our sickness away and carried our diseases for us. The Gospel of the Lord. His readings speak of the power of words, and it's eloquent in that first reading, their absence. The people cannot find the words, quite literally. They have been stunned into silence. Even the seniors, those of great wisdom and experience, mutely they sit on the ground, the elders of the daughters of Zion. And there is a hunger. There is a sense, perhaps, of our current Eucharistic fast as they ask, where is the bread? And they regret. These are powerful words. My eyes wasted away with weeping, my entrails shuddered. I'm not entirely sure what it means when your entrails shudder, but it certainly sounds like something you would want to avoid. And the words, the visions of the prophets were delusive, tinsel things. They never pointed out your sin. They've come to realize that what the world promised, what these false promises, uh, false prophets promised, would bring fulfillment, have failed them. The prophets used empty words. And so it's now time for them to use words of their own to cry out to the Lord. Something echoed in the psalm. This deeply distressing time, the enemy has laid waste to the whole of the sanctuary. Your foes have made uproar in the house of prayer. They cry to the Lord. Do not forget your poor servants. They still have hope. And it's a true hope. The Lord does not abandon them. It's a sense of the cry and of hope which is taken up by the centurion in the gospel. He recognizes the presence of the Lord when generations of the Lord's own people have been blind. And he pleads for his servant who is in pain and the Lord offers to come and heal which is when we hear those incredible words of faith. Sir, I am not worthy to have you under my roof. Just give the word, and my servant will be cured. It's clear that the centurion, he understands the power of orders, the ability of the word to make it so. And the Lord reflects, Nowhere in Israel have I found faith like this. 
Only such faith had been found in those times of the generations before. The city would not have fallen. The temple would not have been under attack. Such is the power of this faith that the centurion's words, as you know, find their way into our liturgy this morning. Sir, I am not worthy to have you under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. As the centurion understood, it is the words that make it so. This morning focused on the power and the effect of words and of the words. This is my body. This is my blood. And it is so. And in response, we pray those words of the centurion as we are invited to make them so in our lives to recognize that the church and the world are as dependent now on the Lord in our age as we have been in every generation. We pray that we will be a faithful people, a faithful nation. Lord, I am not worthy to have you under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.